Right, of course, we are all about talking about successful leadership this morning and asking you guys to contribute. I'm loving your feedback. Keep it coming. And of course, we have our very own life coach who has great nuggets of wisdom. Cece. Coach, hi. Hi. Thanks, Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. Again, such a privilege. Thank you, Cece. And outside the studio this time. Yeah. And it's we're beautiful. drinking tea. Mm. Hi. Hi. <laughs> hi. Okay, so Thank let's you. get right into it. Let's just talk about, of course, streamlining, uh, which is important when we are talking about having successful traits or leadership traits. How do you start to get some of these traits and then streamline them so that they're working for you? So what I say to people is to be a successful leader, and, and success and happiness for me go hand in hand. So with the work I do with my clients, for example, we don't just focus on their work life, the men and women who I coach the leaders I coach, we look at their life outside of work, we look at their health, um, are they you know, spending a lot of time with their hobbies, what are their relationships like, because you bring, if you think of every single person in your office, they are human beings who are bringing all their stuff to the workplace, mm -hmm. yeah? So in this day and age, especially now that Gen you know, Y and Gen Z are entering the workplace, they have a completely different mindset. Um, we need to focus on three things, authenticity, um, empathy, and effectiveness. Okay. So when I say, how do you start being an authentic leader? I mean things like, you don't have to pretend that you have all the answers always, because that's an unnecessary burden that leaders place on themselves. You're human, you don't know everything, your direct reports are also there to inform you about what's going on on the ground. It's also about listening and learning. So that's what I mean by authenticity, you know, no, no pretense, being who you really are. And that also means as much as you can, work in an organization that allows you to be yourself. So you need to be working out where you are most suited. Are you suited to the corporate world? Are you suited to a smaller organization? Are you suited to being an entrepreneur? Okay. We talk a lot about entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship, and entrepreneurship is a great thing, but it's really important for people to understand that not everybody can be or should be an entrepreneur. It's a very, very hard slog, you know, starting your own business and actually making it work. Right. Right, of course, we are all about talking about successful leadership this morning and asking you guys to contribute. I'm loving your feedback. Keep it coming. And of course, we have our very own life coach who has great nuggets of wisdom. Cece. Coach, hi. Hi. Thanks, thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. Again, such a privilege. Thank you, Cece. And outside the studio this time. Yeah. And it's we're beautiful. drinking tea. Mm. Hi. Hi. <laughs> hi. Okay, so Thank let's you. get right into it. Let's just talk about, of course, streamlining, uh, which is important when we are talking about having successful traits or leadership traits. How do you start to get some of these traits and then streamline them so that they're working for you? So what I say to people is to be a successful leader, and, and success and happiness for me go hand in hand. So with the work I do with my clients, for example, we don't just focus on their work life, the men and women who I coach the leaders I coach, we look at their life outside of work, we look at their health, um, are they you know, spending a lot of time with their hobbies, what are their relationships like, because you bring, if you think of every single person in your office, they are human beings who are bringing all their stuff to the workplace, mm. yeah? So in this day and age, especially now that Gen you know, Y and Gen Z are entering the workplace, they have a completely different mindset. Um, we need to focus on three things, authenticity, um, empathy, and effectiveness. Okay. So when I say, how do you start being an authentic leader, I mean things like, you don't have to pretend that you have all the answers always, because that's an unnecessary burden that leaders place on themselves. You're human, you don't know everything, your direct reports are also there to inform you about what's going on on the ground. It's also about listening and learning. So that's what I mean by authenticity, you know, no, no pretense, being who you really are. And that also means as much as you can, work in an organization that allows you to be yourself. 
So you need to be working out where you are most suited. Are you suited to the corporate world? Are you suited to a smaller organization? Are you suited to being an entrepreneur? Okay. We talk a lot about entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship, and entrepreneurship is a great thing, but it's really important for people to understand that not everybody can be or should be an entrepreneur. It's a very, very hard slog you know, starting your own business and actually making it work. Right. So get in where you fit in, as they say. So that's authenticity. And I also talk about empathy. I remember when I was managing uh, my team, when I was working in Australia, I was always conscious of the fact that, yes, these are my quote unquote direct reports, but these are human beings with lives outside of this workplace. They have moms, they have dads they need to look after, they have siblings, they have friends, they might be unwell, they, you know, human beings. So to remember the humanity of everybody you work with will make you a very successful leader. Mm -hmm. So it's things like, um, you know, if I, if I just give examples, I always encourage my direct reports to be active in their life outside of work. You know, what, what are you doing outside of work that inspires you, nurtures you? Because if all you have is your work life, you'll come to work more drained, more drained, more drained as each day goes on because you've got nothing else filling you up. So I'd always ask them what their hobbies were and they, they, there are so many interesting things. Your direct reports, your staff members, even your bosses are doing outside of work. And they can bring that creativity and the experiences they have from outside, the, the ideas they have from outside, all that can help your team. When different people are asked, what do you think? And they come with their ideas, their suggestions, their experiences, the whole team thrives. So treating your staff with empathy, your coworkers, I think, and your bosses as well, of course, is very, very important. And the final thing is effectiveness because it's great to have a nice boss, it's great to be a nice boss, but you have to be effective, which means you have to be producing results for the organization that you work for, whether that means helping them make more money, helping them gain more customers, helping them make more sales, helping them be more known out there in the market, you have to be an effective leader. So those three things, if you bear them in mind, will help you to be a successful leader. Okay. Mm. So, Sisi, not everyone is a leader. Am I right? I think that's, that's a, such a good question. Yeah. I, think, I think there's a spark there in, in all of us, but the truth is some people don't want it. Okay. So I've actually worked, I've actually um, been the boss of people who, they're, they're happy where they are, you know? They're, they're happy to go to work, do what they need to do, and go back home. Maybe they don't want the stresses that come with being a manager, being a boss, and that's fine too. So I think we all have a spark inside of us. Um, you see it when people are involved in, in their hobbies or in a sport that they love, the leadership just comes out. You know what I mean? So maybe not in the workplace, we can't all be leaders, but I think it's, it's less to do with um, what's inside us and more to do with the choices that different people make. Okay. In this day and age, money is tied to success. Money is tied to leaders and successful people. How do you separate, I guess, the stereotype, especially when you don't have money? I know so many amazing leaders who are not famous. They're, they're not famous. Um, if I think of my, my own life coaches, if I think of my own business coaches, if I think of some of my clients even, they're not famous, but they're amazing leaders. They have teams who they're nurturing and inspiring. They, they're scoring goals, so they're being effective. One thing, there's, there's, something, there's a lot of interesting things you said there, and a really important one is the money aspect. I always say to clients, don't, don't be afraid of money. Money has become a very dirty word for a lot of people. So it's very important to analyze your money mindset. You know, money is what allows you to um, live the kind of life you want to live. To live in a nice safe neighborhood, for example, you need money. To take your children to the kind of schools you want them to go to, you need money. If you get sick, you need money when you go to you know, some of these um, hospitals. 
Um, money is what allows you to be generous and to give freely, whether it's to relatives who need your help or to charitable causes that you believe in. Um, money is what allows you to go on those holidays you want to go for. If you want to start a business, whether it's inspiring others, lifting others up, or whether it's a pure money-making business, you need money. You need money, you know. All, all the, the staff at AM Live need to be paid. So it's place to pay for itself. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So the first thing is to have a look at your money mindset. Make money your friend. But also, just because other people are doing dodgy things with money, just because other people are doing shady things in order to get money. That's not going to be you. I say that whenever I do events or I'm doing a talk, I say that to people. Don't worry about what that shady person is doing. That's not going to be you. Okay. That is not going to be you. You're not going to do that. And <clears throat> excuse me. it's really important for people to understand that even here in a country like Kenya, you can make money with integrity. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm not swindling my clients, for <laughs> example. I can't. No coach can. So you, you just have to, first of all, surround yourself by peop with people who have integrity mm -hmm. so that you can move away from some of these common, common unhelpful mindsets. You know, you can't catch a break here in Kenya. You just, you have to know someone. Yeah. You know what I yeah. mean? Just to, to try and move away from those mindsets that leave you disempowered and just to focus on your purpose. Um, I think it's also important for people to understand that you know, m money does help you. If, 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 say, you want to be a leader rather than, let's, let's move away even from the word politician, because okay. leaders and politicians, th those two words mean two different things. Right. If you want to be a leader, it, it will help you to have a bit of money in your bag so that you can, you know, you need to pay for, um, pay for the marketing you need to pay for to let people know what you do. You know, you, when I'm running an event, for example, and I'm promoting it, I need money. Um, whether it's putting flyers up in strategic locations, whether it's online advertising, you do need the money. Okay. So if you can just start, um, you, you, you will help yourself as a, as a leader or an aspiring leader. Right, uh, lots of pressure. People are looking to be promoted. Guys are looking to go to next level when it comes to their job or whatever capacity they're, they're working in. How, of course, do you meet all that pressure? People are dealing with KPIs on management okay. le level and, of course, still consider your well-being in that process. Yeah, thanks. That's a really important question. Well-being, well-being, well-being. It's a buzzword now and it's been a long time coming. So again, if I just give you an example from my own life, yeah. CC. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> because I, 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 it's, it's important for people to know that we are not pontificating from up on high as if we are perfect. <laughs> yeah. We are not. Um, long time ago, I was the sort of person who my health was just somewhere there in the <laughs> bottom of the list of priorities, right? right? Yeah. Going to work early, leaving late, going to work on weekends, even when I didn't have to. Really? Yeah, even when I didn't have to, because I was being motivated by, can you guess? Fear. Fear. fear and Sorry. money. <laughs> fear and money, okay. but fear is the key thing. Mm -hmm. You know, to be seen to be doing something, to, to, to be seen to be not slacking, to be seen to be dedicated and committed, mm -hmm. when what you should be doing is actually being dedicated and committed and if you're in an environment that doesn't allow you to do that you need to start looking around for the environments that allow you to do that and this is what I meant when I said as in as much as you can find a workplace or a job that allows you to be authentic okay. completely authentic so for me for example I'm very much suited to running my own business and then for me the next best environment for me is a small sort of startup Okay. situation yeah. where we can go to work in jeans, um, we're the ones developing the systems, the processes. The controlled environment. That's, that's where I thrive. Okay. So basically what I'm saying is go where you thrive. It will bring out the best in, in you. Um, are you telling people to quit your job? No, don't, quit your don't job do that. Of her. Don't do that. <laughs> don't do that, please. <laughs> you have to have a plan. You yeah. must have a plan. And there are many people who are in jobs they love. Yeah which is really great. Stay. Yeah. Stay in a job you love. 
the, the challenge comes when you're feeling um, not valued or drained or perhaps being um, used and the same, the, the reward is not coming back your way, whether it's recognition, um, money, uh, you talked earlier about promotions, that mm. kind of thing. Yeah. So just just uh, analyze your environment. Just just look around and ask yourself, am I being my best here? Right. Because it's not about where you work, right? It's you and what you're bringing to the table. I always say to people, let's look at our own behavior. Let's look at where perhaps we're not being authentic. Yeah. Because it's not about trying to now control other people. <laughs> Let everybody else be authentic. I'll just continue doing what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah. no, no. It doesn't work like that. Okay. So the other thing, you know, just going back to your question, it's also important to pat yourself on the back. If you know you've done a good job, acknowledge that for yourself. Your, your manager is kind of busy, <laughs> can't <laughs> always be telling you, great job, great job, Kobe, great job, great job, Kobe. But I, I just, want I love affirmation. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you should get the affirmation. Yeah. Um, uh, if we go back to successful leaders, it's also about affirming and really valuing your people. But you can't do that all day, every day, yeah? Because we're adults, yeah? We're not, we're not uh, <laughs> children. Yeah. So pat yourself on the back for a job that you know you've done well. I also say to people when I do talks in organizations is be straightforward in your communication. Be straightforward in your, your communication. How do you work best? What do you need? Are you the kind of person who can be left alone and the job will get done? Or do you need a bit more support, okay. for example? Be straightforward in your communication so that everybody is on the same page. Everybody's clear about what's going on. Um, I talk to people about what I call the iceberg effect. You know, an iceberg is very, it's huge above the surface of the water, right. but it's 20 times bigger below the surface of the water. And it's all the things that are happening beneath the surface that are having an impact on how people behave at work and at home. All the un un unasked questions, mm -hmm. all the assumptions, simply because you're not being straightforward in your communication. So that will help you to be a successful leader in whatever capacity, as you say. Straightforward communication. Fantastic. Yeah. So there's many, many people who are watching, viewers uh, who have children, who are dealing with full-time jobs, who are working 10-hour days, who are doing their masters. It's a full-time schedule. How do you as a parent start to identify leadership skills in your young child, in your son or your daughter, and then how do you actually hone that, even balancing your career? This goes back to the question you asked earlier about well-being. And the first question to ask yourself is, why am I doing this? Why am I doing this? And quite often, the costs can outweigh the benefits. Because, you know, we, we get caught up in what we're doing. And we think we're doing it for reasons that will help us in the end. Mm. But the question to ask is, okay, why am I doing this? And do the benefits still outweigh the costs? Yeah, um, you know, going back to well-being, we all want to feel connected to our kids. We all want to feel connected to our parents. And it's not necessarily the quantity of time. I truly believe it's the quality to have a meaningful half hour with your child, I think is much better than a meaningless two hours where he's watching TV, you know, your daughter might be doing something else, you're on your phone, but you're together in the room for an hour. You know, you're better off having even 20 minutes of I'm looking you in the eye, you're looking me in the eye, I'm asking you how your day went, you're asking me how my day went, you're sharing what your challenges are, I'm sharing what my challenges are. You know, I've, I've had, an, and I think a lot of coaches will agree with me, we have adult clients crying during coaching sessions because of things that happened a long time ago. And so that, that pain is very real. Those memories um, are very real in people's minds. So always ask yourself, well, why am I doing this? And check in with yourself every now and then. Are the benefits outweighing the costs? Are the benefits of whatever I'm doing outweighing the costs. So I've decided to go study, great. I've decided to start a business, great. I am now the CEO, great. Are the benefits still outweighing the costs? Okay. That's really important. And in terms of well-being, 
you know, there's, we can talk about well-being on many levels. There's physical well-being, which we all know about. Um, I always say to people, do something that you enjoy doing so that it's less of a drag. Yeah. So if someone asked me to go to a gym and I said, okay, sure, I'll go to the gym, I'll fall off the wagon in less than a month yeah. because that's not the environment where I thrive. So I prefer swimming, I prefer going for walks, like in Karura Forest, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to physical well-being, physical fitness, again, just be, be authentic. What do you enjoy doing? Yeah, You have to, it, it takes less effort yeah. to do what you enjoy doing. But then there's also spiritual well-being, you know, always checking in on your relationship with God or the universe, the force, whatever you want to call it. Is your relationship with that higher power authentic? Do you feel connected? Do you feel supported? Um, there's emotional well-being as well, you know, expressing your emotions healthily. Um, if you're upset and you smile and pretend it's okay, that turns into resentment, which turns into anger, which eats away at you and can eventually become depression. Mm -hmm. So we can talk about well-being on many different levels. Being creative, um, writing, um, you know, painting, dance. Uh, a lot of people are doing Do yoga something. nowadays. Yeah. Do something. Mm -hmm. It gets you in the right brain, which is really important because we're in our left brains a lot, logic, reason, rationality. The right brain is where play, fun, and spontaneity live. And you can, your, your kids are a great opportunity for you to become childlike, yeah. again, just playing with them. Uh, those of you know, your viewers who have pets, um, th those are all uh, things in your environment that are there to, to help you in some way, shape, or form. So you take advantage of them so that you can be well as you lead. So I have to throw a spanner in the works. Yeah, I have to ask this. We act like uh, Ugandans voted in our leaders or Tanzanians voted in our le leaders when we actually voted them in and it's become a miserable cycle for decades. We vote them in, then we spend five, 10 years complaining about them. How do we get out of this rut and what needs fixing, especially at the top level? Gosh, this is our, our show unto itself, yeah. this topic of our leaders, um, our politicians. There's a difference between leadership and, and politics. Yes, yeah, yeah, it's very that. important for people to understand that, understand the difference between leadership and politics. So there are some politicians who are not leaders. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah. They're very good politicians. And this is around the world, eh? okay. not, not just in Kenya. So here's an exercise for everybody to do. Go home and just find out the difference between leadership and politics. Because okay. there are politicians even in the workplace. You know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Leadership versus politics. So let's begin from the beginning, Kobe. Um, so I, I work in the world of mindset and human behavior. It's very important for Kenyans and I think Africans in general, anyone who's been colonized to understand that the, the hurdles we need to overcome are, um, they're, they're high, but they can be overcome. So we've come from being colonized to being told, okay, we're gonna leave you to your own devices, quote unquote, yeah. we're gonna leave you to your own devices, go off and do what you can. But if you think of your grandparents, your grandparents probably were, your grandparents were around when the colonialists were around. So they have a very different mindset. Your grandparents gave birth to your parents and taught your parents certain things. And then your parents taught you certain things. So this mindset of, I call it a victim consciousness. Okay. A victim consciousness, if you, if you think of somebody who is in an abusive relationship and they're not leaving, that's somebody who has a victim consciousness. So how do these victims behave? They, they can't see the forest for the trees. They, you, know, you, you might tell that friend of yours, look, you need to leave, but they're thinking, well, no, no, he's not that bad or yeah. she's not that bad. Victims also have uh, temporary, they, they have short-term memory, okay. yeah? Because it was bad last week, but this week it's okay. Yeah. I should stay in this situation. Then it'll be bad next week, but the week after it'll be good. So they have, um, you know, temporary, they, they, they forget. Yeah. And that's part of the survival instinct, yeah? The other thing victims do is they, whether it's because of the pain or because they just can't get out of the situation, is they're in complete denial. 
So if you take that victim consciousness, that person in an abusive relationship, and you expand it to an entire city, to an entire nation, you start to see how we have a victim consciousness. Yeah, we, do. we keep going back for more of the abuse. <laughs> we keep going back for more of the abuse. Yeah. So this is something that's inside all of us at a very, very deep level. And it's because of where we've come from. Okay. It's because of where we've come from. So for me, what I say to people, the first thing you need to do is it starts with the individual. Yeah, get a coach, have someone help you see your blind spots. Yeah, so victim consciousness could be, for example, let me give you an example. Every now and so then, yeah. <laughs> every now and then, I'll be meeting with someone and I'll, it doesn't happen often, but it does happen. I get asked, Cece, do you find it difficult to get clients because you look very young? And I just laugh because that's that person projecting onto me, okay. right? So for the record, I'm 35 years old. <laughs> so I'm not a spring chicken, right? Yeah. But that is just not, in my mind, it's not in my consciousness. I'm not walking around thinking, oh, will I get that job? I look very young. It's not in my mind at all. But that's in people's minds. Yes. Um, don't think I can do this, I don't know anyone. Don't think I can do this, I don't have the money. Don't think I can do this, I look too young. Don't think I can do this, I'm not the right tribe. Right. Don't think I can do this, I'm a woman. Don't think I can do this, I'm too old. Don't think I can do this, I'm too young. I've heard it all. I've heard it all, Kobe, yeah. I've heard it all. The reasons why something can't be done by you. So first things first, it starts with the individual. Look at yourself. Where are you being a victim? Where are you behaving in a disempowered way? Mm -hmm. And then, next step, you start finding other people who are on your journey. And you start hanging out. Let's meet. Let's meet somewhere and talk about what we can do to contribute to this country. Right. What we can do to contribute to this world. I hang around with a lot of coaches. That's all we're talking about. We don't talk about the problems. We talk about how to solve the problems. And the entrepreneurs I work with also have that mindset. Let's talk about how we can solve these problems. So it goes from the individual to smaller groups to an even larger group. Parliament, hopefully. <laughs> Parliament, hopefully. Yeah. But it's very, very important for, um, and I'll speak about the, the Kenyan context and the African context. You were raised, this is how it works. You were raised by your parents, they have a certain mind. They were raised by their parents, and their parents were probably around when the colonialists were around. Mm -hmm. So they have a certain mindset. And your grandparents' parents were definitely around during colonization. So they have a certain mindset, you know? And it's the reason why, and I'm going to be very blunt here, it's the reason why a lot of people resent um, the Wazungus, for yeah. example. You know, you have a resentment for the Wazungus in the country. That's that victim consciousness. And the reality is so many of them are doing so much great work here. Right. They're starting businesses, they're giving people jobs. Every time I enter an Uber um, taxi, I always ask, how is this thing? Every single one of them have said, I love this. Really? It's great. Yeah. Where else will a young guy like me get a job like this? I work my own hours, I make good money, I meet decent people, interesting people, people from all over the world. Now we can resent the people from outside who have brought this company here, or we can just thank God that young men and women are being given jobs like this right. by a company like that. You see what I'm saying? I'm loving it. Yeah, okay. so it's really important to think a bit more deeply about these things. It's, it's, it doesn't mean you give people an excuse for behaving badly, but um, it's so much deeper than you think. Okay. Yeah. So, Sisi, throughout this process, you are going to stumble, you're going to fall, there'll be a mm -hmm. lot of challenges, there'll be blood, sweat and tears throughout this process. Mm -hmm. How do you pick yourself up mm -hmm. after the fact and mm -hmm. keep really set, uh, your eyes set on the prize? Yeah, so, wow, the stumbling blocks. Yeah. <laughs> when the customers aren't coming in. <laughs> yes, when there's no money, there's, when the yeah. kids are screaming, when yeah. life is just a hot mess. Life is a hot mess yeah. and life gets messy, mm -hmm. life gets messy. And life gets messy for everyone. It's really, really important to understand. Life gets messy for everyone. No one gets off scot-free. Right. So again, it goes back to your why. 
why? Why are you doing what it is you're doing? Especially for business owners and leaders in organizations, eh? when it's just looking quite bad and quite tough, you go back to your why. So if your why is inspiring enough, mm -hmm. well, I'm here because I'm having an impact on the lives of Kenyans, a positive impact. I'm here because I'm creating jobs and I'm inspiring all these people around me. I'm here because I'm very good at what I do and I love it. If your job has impact, you're gonna be able to get through those hard times much more easily than if you're kind of just there either for the money or for the, or you know, hey, because you haven't been uh, creative about how you spend your time. Yeah. So it always comes back to the why. The second thing is ask for help. So this goes back to authentic leadership. Ask for help. If you're stuck, ask someone. And I would say ask a professional okay. because a lot of people have come to me, Kobe, and said, you know, I called that friend of mine and that was a mistake. Yeah. <laughs> Your friend is well-meaning, but they have bad advice. Right. I actually spoke to a lady just yesterday, an entrepreneur who's going to start working, doing some coaching with me, mm -hmm. and um, she was given advice that didn't work for her. You know, and when she realized it, she said, you know what, I'm not going to do that. Let me just sit with this. Mm -hmm. And I said, good on her for doing that. She, she had the, the insight and the courage to just say, um, I'm not going to do that because it's not going to work for me. Okay. Uh, so a, a lot of people would have just said, well, all right, I'm being told to do this. Doesn't feel right, but let me do it anyway. Mm -hmm. Then you land yourself in a hot mess. So, of course, guys, as always, I am going to connect you to Cece. She's everywhere, okay? She is on social media, and you guys need to interact with her because, trust me, she's doing great things on there. She's everywhere. The main <laughs> protagonist is yep. your handle? Yeah, the main protagonist.com. Okay. But here's something I want to share with um, people because I'm getting good feedback. Yeah. I've got free audio coaching content available. So, if you go to soundcloud.com, forward slash coach underscore CC or Johnny. Okay. I've got hours and hours of audio content to help you thrive in your work, your life outside of work. So please immerse yourself in that. Mm -hmm. And of course, on Facebook, I'm coach CC or Johnny. Amazing. Yeah. We're making progress. We're making progress. I feel like <laughs> I'm learning. Yeah, we, we talked about it. You, yeah. you, you're, you're feeling happier. We're the outside proof the is studio. in the pudding. <laughs> this is the proof in our pudding. This is the proof in our pudding. Thank you. Thank you so you're much welcome. for being here. And thanks right. to the viewers.